All right, I'm heavily caffeinated and ready to talk about some Nat 4s. That's not the intro. That shouldn't be the intro. Summoner's War is turning nine and the very same event that's letting us choose a nat five from nine options is letting us take home a nat four of our choosing. So here's a list of the top nine nat fours for new players. Quick disclaimer before we get started, I'm not going to be including fusible nat fours in this list. So even though Verd and Melia are arguably some of the most important units for new players, they won't be making an appearance on this list. And from a script writing perspective, that's great because they'd both probably make it very deep into the list and that frees up a couple slots for me to play with. But you also shouldn't need a list to tell you that these are incredible monsters. And if you're curious as to why they're so incredible, then I highly recommend that you check out any of the Trick Roo guides or Dragons B12 videos for Verd and any of the Dot Team videos for Melia. So let's get started. Number nine, Aster, Lapis's spicy sister. Can't believe I wrote that. <laughs> Astra is a really cool monster, especially when it comes to breaking into NB12. Her passive says that she deals 100% more damage to any enemy who has more HP than her. And bosses have more HP than her. For new players, she can be another multi-hitting unit for Necro B12 teams. Later down the line, once you have a Trick Roo team ruined up, she performs super well, paired up with the three Ikaroos and a Shaman. Number eight is Hua. I feel like I always need to justify myself whenever I bring up Hua nowadays, because for the most part, Lauren has taken over what Hua used to do. However, she's found a new home in R5. Ever since the game changed to allow you to do raid level five all by yourself, players all of a sudden need redundancies for skill effects. And Hua is a great answer to that problem. She provides attack bar reduction as well as a slow to help keep the boss's attack bar down and keep your team alive. Number seven is the Wind Heart Magician, Triana. Now we're getting into the meat of the list. Triana saw a lot of play in RTA back in 2018, and she's still good for that, though she was really good for stopping Mo Long Recklesses. Nowadays, and especially towards the earlier side of a player's Summoner's War career, she can be great on an arena defense. I personally use Triana on my own arena defense. Now, that's not to say that you should hurry and make one. In fact, you should probably have a farmable defense for quite a while to ensure that you're staying low in the rankings of arena and farming up glory points to increase your towers. But once you're out of that phase and you're trying to climb because we care about numbers, baby, then Triana performs really well on a team along with some other way to prevent death or revive your monsters. I like pairing her with a nice Abelio. I sound like I'm talking about a fine wine. Oh, Triano is best paired with a rustic Abelio. Next up on the list, it's Chilling the Water Jackalene. Especially early on, I see a lot of players misconstrue the gimmick of Dragons B12. The shell of the team is Verd, Fran, Lauren, and a damage dealer. Now that's great, but that fifth unit is often an immunity unit for new players. However, the gimmick of dragons is not outlasting what the dragon is doing to you. Instead, it is removing beneficial effects, keeping that immunity off the dragon. So chilling works great in that fifth slot because he has no choice but to try to remove beneficial effects on his team. Well, he does have skill too. When he's not using skill too, he has to at least try to remove the immunity. And if you pair him up with something like a Raok or a Crow that has a team up effect on one of their skills, then you're gonna have even more chances to try to strip. Because Lauren's not gonna do that on her own. She loves using skill too when she's not supposed to. Number five, Galleon, the water pirate captain. Galleon's come up in a lot of videos recently because he's a super reliable addition to a pretty accessible arena offense. What that looks like is a speed or attack leader to benefit the team, followed up by some sort of AOE strip. If you're looking for a farmable option, Gemini and Verisa have both been Hall of Heroes in the past. Maybe somewhere down the line you picked up a Tiana. She's probably the best option for this slot, though you could also use Triton. Once the enemy team is opened up, Galleon follows up with an AOE defense break, non-hitting by the way, that does come into play more frequently than you'd think, and he applies attack buff to your whole team, thus allowing your AOE damage coming right after to just wipe out the enemy team. To this day, nobody quite does what Galleon does better than him, so that's why he's got a strong place on this list. Now number four is an awesome option for that AOE DPS follow-up to Galleon. It's Kaki, the Fire Onimusha. 
Kaki gets better and better every single time I use him or read his skills. The other thing that he's got going for him is that he's actually pretty easy to rune. Because he scales with attack and defense so well, Kaki's runes will go further on him than they would on any other monster. And I'm all about that rune mileage. So he's great on arena offense, so you can also use him anywhere you need damage. I'm telling you, this monster's amazing. He can be used in guilds. He has limited use in TOA as a damage dealer, though, you know, it'll drop off towards the later floors of TOA hard. And you can even bring him into RT. He's such a strong threat and he benefits a lot from artifacts. Number three is Hrozvelg, the Wind Barbaric King. He's great for starter GB12 teams. His skill three applies an attack buff and a speed buff to your entire team. It does more than that too, but that's the part that I'm gonna highlight here. His skill two also applies a brand and boosts his attack bar. And having another brand in addition to the one that Two-Way Crow brings is a great way to maximize the damage that your DPS unit does once their turn comes around. Now for the penultimate entry on the list, it's Shina, Talia, or Sabrina whichever one you need to either start or complete your set of twins. Especially early on, it can be kind of tough to find both halves of the twins pairing. That's why events like these are so great. So if you haven't had a chance to collect a twin yet, now might be a great time. Shina has a passive that makes it so she has to try to apply defense break on every single one of her attacks. So it's kind of like Lauren, except she doesn't decrease attack bar. But don't bring that up in front of Shina. She's still, she's still sensitive about it. And frankly, so am I. <laughs> because she used to. That's not funny. I shouldn't joke about that. Oh, she also has an AOE stun on skill two. Next is Talia. And Talia has some of the biggest damage in the entirety of the game, especially when paired up with a boomerang warrior. You can even bring her in the light rift beast, which is crazy because allegedly multi hits are supposed to deal less damage there. So that means that she deals so much damage that she gets to ignore game mechanics because it doesn't look like she's dealing less. That's crazy. Sabrina is the water boomerang warrior, and she's arguably one of the best pairings for the twins. Because under certain circumstances, she will reduce the damage that the twins take, and she'll increase their damage output. Now let's talk about some honorable mentions in no particular order. First of all, it's Garo, the fire ninja. Garo is still probably the most straightforward way to clear the Akroma floor in TOA hard. Of course, you could do something similar by ruining a tanky dark unit, like Basalt, Kamul's, Veramos, etc. However, it can kind of be a little difficult for early game players to ruin a super tanky dark unit. Whereas Garo, you just slap him in the place of your damage dealer and he'll just take care of the problem for you. Next is the Fire Gargoyle. If you're trying to build a Trick Room team, but you can't quite meet that defense prerequisite, you can take a Fire Gargoyle, rune it so it's the fastest on your team, and fill it with Determination runes. Then it will remove itself from combat as long as it's above 70% HP at the start of its turn. At the end of its turn. I meant to say the end of its turn. Because statues can't attack. So the end result of this is slower, but it's basically a working replica of what a Trick Room team should be doing. Still in the honorable mentions here, but these are units that you kind of want to keep in mind for when you're out of the early game and going into the mid or late game. First, it's Lucian. What? Lucian? Not on the list? This is crazy talk. That's what you sound like right now. If you've been on the channel for a while, then you know how I feel about Lucian, especially when it comes to new players, which is what we're talking about today. Lucian is one of the best damage dealers in the entirety of Summoner's War. He has a legacy that spans the distance of the entire history of the game. And he's not likely to go anywhere anytime soon, especially because he has an AoE third skill that ignores defense and an attack lead. But for newer players, all he really does to a team is add variance. So if you find yourself in a position where you already have all these units, then yeah, pick up a Lucian so that way when it comes time to include him on your team, you've got one. If not, and you're just starting Summoner's War, maybe it's better to go with something a little bit safer, like an HP lead, such as Sigmaris or Veramos. Okay, now let's talk about a couple that are cool for RTA and other PvP places in the game. First of all, it's Kaito, the newly buffed Wind Samurai, who also has a skill that fully increases an opponent's cooldown time. Windy is amazing in Guild Siege. He can't be defense broken. He's often paired with Tractor and Lulu. Next is Antares, the Fire Lich. Because of his passive, Antares will be stacking a percentage chance to cut in and take a turn when he's not supposed to. This is great disruption for when your opponent is taking a lot of turns or has built-in turn cycling. He's super fun to use and very annoying to play against. Next is the Wind Robo, who is arguably one of the best AoE strippers in the game right now, and he has an AoE stun follow-up. Then it's Clara, the Fire Purette, who also has an AoE strip with a stun on one skill, but she also has a speed lead. Here we go. Number one. I forgot. <laughs> Number one 
is Tyrone, the water self. It is so important early to be able to clear TOA because it's one of the most reliable sources of frequent rewards for new players. And for everybody, actually, me too. Tyrone's kit is so crowd control focused that I just can't not recommend him. He also has a 19% speed lead, which comes into play more frequently than you'd think. He freezes on skill three and applies a slow, and he has an AOE attack bar reduction all the way down to zero on skill two. Couldn't ask for more. So there we go. That's my top nine nat fours for new players. Does my list look like yours? If it doesn't, tell me your top nine in the comments down below. All right, see you later. Have a great day.